God says he actually dwells in the high and the lofty place. Why? That he might revive the spirit of the humble. That he might dwell with him that is of a contrite and humble spirit. That he might revive those hearts. You see, if you would humble yourself, you would be dwelling with him that is in the high and lofty place. You would be dwelling with him who created you, Jesus Christ, who was for everlasting and shall be for everlasting. You would be dwelling with the God of the whole universe. You would be dwelling with him who gave himself for you, that you might be made the righteousness of God in him. You would be dwelling with him who is from everlasting to everlasting, whose name is holy. Oh, you would be dwelling with him. But God says, I will not contend forever, neither will I be always angry, for the spirit should fail before me, and the souls which I have made. God says this to you. Listen carefully. God says this to you. For the iniquity, the sinfulness of your covetousness, God was angry with you. You are covetous. You are going after the things that you desire, that your soul desires, and not going after that which Jesus Christ desires. God says he is angry with you for your covetousness, for your sin of covetousness. And God says he smote you. And he hid himself and was angry as you went on perversely in the thoughts of your own heart, in the way of your own heart. But oh, that you would be humble. Oh, that you'd be contrite. Because if you'd be humble, you'd be contrite. God says, I have seen his ways and I will heal him. Oh, what great news that should be to each one of you. You see, you've lifted yourself up against God. You have played the whore with God. You have gone after the idols of education. You have gone after the idols of peace. You have gone after the idols of a retirement. You have gone after the idols of money. You have, to, have gone after the idols of covetousness. You have gone after the idols of fornication, of lust. You have gone after the idols of entertainment. You have gone after the idols of sports. And yet God says if you would humble yourself, he has seen all that that you have done, and he would heal you. God, the creator, he would heal you. He would take away your sins. He'd cast your sins as far as the east is from the west. Jesus Christ would remember your sins no more. He would see your ways, and in spite of all of that, he would heal you. Oh, call upon the name of Jesus Christ, the deliverer who turns away ungodliness from his people. And he will show mercy to you. He says he dwells with those who are humble. He dwells with those who are contrite. He is in the high and lofty place that he might dwell with those who are humble. So humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he, that he might show mercy to you and lift you up in due time. God says, I create the fruit of the lips. Peace, peace to him that is far off. And to him that is near, says the Lord. And I will heal him. This is for those of you who will not humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. God says the wicked are like the troubled sea when it cannot rest, whose waters cast up mire and dirt. That's you, San Francisco. You're like the troubled sea. That's most of you who come to visit San Francisco. The wicked. God says you are like the waters of a troubled sea. Anybody ever watch the movies where there is a, a great sea and it almost it almost destroys those that are in the boat? Oh, the waters they they cast up mud, they cast up dirt, they bring all sorts of things up. There is no calmness there. You cannot sleep on those seas. God says he dwells with those who are humble. But the rest of you, the wicked, you're like the troubled sea that cannot rest. Because God says there is no peace. Says my God to the wicked, there is no peace, says the Lord to the wicked. Oh, that you would dwell on those thoughts, that you would consider those thoughts. 
you who cry for peace, that you will consider that there is no peace. Says the Lord to the wicked, there is no peace for you. There is no deliverance. For all eternity, you're going to be like the troubled sea. Right now, you're like it, and you're going to be even more so in hell. There is no peace. There is no rest. There is only rest, but for those who are humble, who are contrite, broken over their sins before God, those are the ones that Jesus Christ will dwell with. So humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. Repent. Call upon the name of Jesus Christ while he is near. And he will hear you. There is no hope for you in your entertainments. There is no hope for you in your marches for peace. There is no hope for you in all the idols that you lift up. And you said not, there is no hope for me in these vain things. There is no hope for me in these vain idolatries, these vain things that I've gone after. You say, oh, I found the life of my hand. Sports is my life. Oh, I found the life of my hands. Oh, oh, my education, that's my life. I found the life of my hands. Oh, retirement, that's life. You didn't say, oh, there's no hope in these things. And God says, you're wearied in the greatness of your way. God says, of whom have you been afraid? Of whom have you feared that you should not fear me? Of whom have you been afraid that you have lied and have not remembered me, nor laid it to your heart? God says, have not I held my peace even of old, and you don't fear me? God's held his peace. He hasn't punished you. Every one of us here, we are deserving of God pouring out his wrath upon you right now. Oh, that an earthquake would come and would destroy all of you right now. God says it's by his mercies. You are not condemned already. Don't you see these things? God says for a long time he has held his peace. For a long time God has not destroyed you when you're deserving of it. God says you still won't fear him. So God's going to declare your righteousness. Oh, you think that's a good thing? God's going to declare your righteousness. No, God says that every thought of your heart is only evil continually. So when God declares your righteousness, he says he's going to declare all your righteousness is as minstrel rags. That's used tampons for those of you who don't understand that language. God's going to declare all of your goodness, every good thing you've ever done, every time that you have given to the poor, every time that you have, have, have done something which you say is good, God's going to declare it all as used tampons. I will declare your righteousness, says the Lord, and your works, for they shall not profit you. Your works aren't going to profit you because you've gone after idols rather than after God. Your works aren't going to profit you because your hope is in your education. Your hope is in your retirement. Your hope is in achieving a false peace for Iran, for Iraq, for Afghanistan. Your hope is in all these vain things, and your hope is not in the God who created you. Your hope is not in Jesus Christ who died for you and rose again. Your hope is not in the one who gave himself for your sins, that you might die to sin and live to righteousness. Your hope is not in the one who desires to deliver you from all ungodliness. God says, when you cry, let your companies deliver you, but the wind shall carry them all away. Vanity shall take them. Vanity shall take them, but he that puts his trust in me shall possess the land and shall inherit his mountain. You see, there is coming a day. You don't think it's coming. There's coming a day when you're going to cry on Jesus Christ. You're going to cry out to him. You're going to say, deliver me. Oh, save me. I was wrong. Everything I did was wrong. You don't see that day coming, but God says, oh, that you were wise and you would consider your final end. Your final end is that you're going to be crying out to God with every last part of your being, with every, every bit that you can muster, crying out to God and saying, deliver me. God says he's going to mock you and he's going to tell you let your education deliver you. Let your retirement money you saved all your life deliver you. Let your gods that you created instead of me deliver you. God is going to mock you with those words and he will